So I put this question to you. If Alberta was getting an awful lot of money from the rest of Canada, maybe $14 billion like Quebec is getting, and said, we are not going to allow French to be spoken in Alberta anymore. Do you think there'd be silence from federal politicians? Because that's what's happening with Quebec. No more English, and keep giving us your $14 billion. Well, Brian Lilly has a view on that. He joins me right now because I want to know about it, because I don't understand why the leaders of our country are sowing perhaps the seeds of the breakup of our country by allowing Quebec to do this. Do you remember when uh, Doug Ford said that they weren't going to build a French university in Toronto? Ooh. At the same time as he said, by the way, three other English-speaking universities weren't going to be built because we didn't have the money. He said that Justin Trudeau was denouncing it. Francois Legault was denouncing it. Melanie Jolie was leading rallies of francophones you against racist it. You Ontarians! <laughs> and eventually they had to put it back in and say, okay, fine, we'll go ahead. We don't have the money, but the feds will give us some. We'll go ahead You're with right. this thing. By the way, there's no students in it. Uh, it's up and running, there's no students. But they, they put it in there. Quebec is uh, putting healthcare for anglophones in danger. They're taking historically English um, towns, boroughs, and, and saying you can't give service in English. Places like Lennoxville, you know, the home of Bishop's University, very English place. No, 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 there's not enough Anglos there anymore. You can't give service at the municipal level. It is, it is authoritarian, it is dictatorial, it's ridiculous. And you have all these government snoops now who are obliged to go in, no, no search warrants at all. Somebody told me you're speaking English in here and they can go in there and determine whether you were or not. I mean, so why is no one standing up for bilingualism? Well, the questions being asked about it in the House of Commons are from the Bloc Québécois saying, why are you letting anyone say anything about this? Um, you know, there was, a, a bit of a, an uproar, the conservative leadership race uh, had leaders finally saying Bill 21, the bigoted bill, is wrong. It took years for that yes. to happen, but nobody's saying anything about Bill 96. And there's no hue and cry out, you know, uh, hue and cry about the fact that they've stapled the notwithstanding clause on the front of the bill once yeah. again. Notwithstanding, you know, notwithstanding. We're using notwithstanding. They use notwithstanding all the time. They're like a Pez dispenser with it, it just pops out constantly. And, and nobody says anything. So why is that though? I mean, this could be seen in 10 years as the start of the breakup of Canada. They want a billions of dollars a year, but you Anglos, you come across the border, you can't speak English. And, and you know what the Bloc is asking about all week in the House of Commons? Why isn't the federal government doing more to shut down Alberta's oil where a lot of that money that they uh, survive on comes from? Uh, this is a, just a disaster and a bizarre part of our uh, country and our makeup, it's got to end, but I don't see how it does. Well, next chapter on that with you, Brian Lilly. Thanks very much. Three minutes. Every day, Justin Trudeau tells you, I am making life more affordable for Canadians. And if you believe that, don't watch the station. But if you think that's baloney, as I do, that's a lie, then keep watching for non-biased, non-Prime Minister's Office funded news analysis. To keep us on the air, please donate. PayPal or send a check. 303 Bay Street in Toronto. We'll get it. We need the money.